Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. I want to spend some time talking about the properties of amines and their reactions. What characterizes the reactions and the properties of amines is the lone pair that exists on the nitrogen. And if you compare it to things like alcohols, they are much stronger bases than oxygen containing molecules because the nitrogen is less electronegative. The lone pair is more easily given up to form bonds. So nitrogen tends to act generally as a base or a nucleophile and that characterizes those reactions of amine compounds. Bases are nucleophiles. So it is the lone pair that is the key to all the reactivity of amines. They don't hydrogen bond as well because the hydrogens aren't quite as acidic as they are in oxygen containing alcohols so they're not quite as good hydrogen bond formers as alcohols in water. However, they do form weak hydrogen bonds. In aqueous solutions, amines are weak bases and if you look at just the reaction of methylamine with water, one can see that a proton transfer can take place. However, the equilibrium does not lie strongly to one side or the other. Um, amines are certainly more basic than water so we'll get a little bit more of the reaction favoring the right side of this equation. Um, but recall that this is described by an equilibrium constant. When we talked about acids previously, we talked about the acidity constant for molecules. And if you recall, we can talk about the pKa of molecules being related to the Ka. It's the min minus log of the Ka, which is the equilibrium constant in an acid-base reaction. Now if you look at the amine which has been protonated, that is the nitrogen has a, a, another hydrogen added to it, and we can look at the pKa of those molecules uh, as it gives up a proton to something like water. Um, for any acid and conjugate base pair, we can actually describe this in terms of the basicity constant, or the pKb. The pKb um, plus the pKa for the ammonium should equal 14. So for example, if we look at the Kb of the molecule in an aqueous solution where water concentration is constant, we have the product ammonium over the starting material NH2. The Kb is 4.37 times 10 to the minus 11th and the pKb is 3.36. So what we can say about this is that uh, the protonated compound, the pKa of the protonated compound is going to be 14 minus the pKb of the amine. So the pKa of the ammonium salt should be about uh, 10.64 if this is the pKb, 14 minus this which says it's a pretty strong acid relative to water. Recall that the pKa of water itself is about 16. So it is a stronger acid, this protonated ammonium, than water is. Well here's a chart that shows some of the pKa's and pKb's of the bases. The pKa's we're referring to here is the pKa of the product or the protonated form. So if ammonia for example reacts with an H plus and becomes ammonium, that is the pK a of ammonium and the pKb of ammonia. And just like when we talk about the pKa in acid strength, the lower the pKb for nitrogen compounds, the stronger the base it is. So we can look at these and see that ammonia and alkyl aliphatic amines are all very similar. Um, ammonia has a pKb of about 4.7. Uh, alkyl amines are a little bit lower because alkyl groups are electron donating. It makes them a little bit more basic. And you notice that all of the aliphatic amines are all in a similar range in terms of pKb. If on the other hand you look at the aromatic amines, these compounds are significantly less basic. So aniline, for example, has a pKb of 9.37. And the protonated form gives up its proton very easily as can be seen by the pKa of the ammonium salt in that it, it has a very strong acidity and gives it up very readily to form this species. Why is this less basic? Well because that lone pair is tied up in resonance throughout the ring which makes them less available to be protonated by various acids. So all these aromatic amines tend to have a much higher pKb and are less basic than aliphatic amines. Here we can see that with the specific numbers. Here's cyclohexylamine or cyclohexanamine. And you look at the acid-base reaction in water, 
It has a PKB of about 3.34. It's a pretty strong base. If you look at the analogous aniline, it has a PKB of 9.37, which says that this amine is a much weaker base than cyclohexyl amine. So PKB values we can use to talk about the same way we use PKA values and compare directly the base strengths of various amines. With strong acids, all amines will react quantitatively to be protonated and form salts. So for example, norepinephrine, this molecule, has only very slight solubility in water. However, if you react this with hydrochloric acid, the nitrogen is protonated essentially completely to form the ammonium chloride salt. And this ammonium chloride salt now is very water soluble. So th this is why oftentimes drugs which contain nitrogen, basic nitrogen components of them are often formulated as the ammonium chloride salts because they tend to be more water soluble and better absorbed by the body. This water solubility also provides us with a handle to be able to separate molecules. Let's say we had a, a, a mixture of something like this alcohol and this amine both have very little water solubility and we want to separate them and we have a mixture. One thing you can do is simply add a strong acid like HCl, the nitrogen compound will be protonated, the alcohol will not, and the nitrogen compound will be soluble in water. The alcohol will be soluble in an organic solvent such as ether, the ammonium chloride will be soluble in water, so ether and water, and you can physically separate those because they don't dissolve in each other, and you can separate the water layer which contains the salt and the ether layer which contains the alcohol and physically separate two different compounds. And then in the, if you want to get your amine back, all you have to do is react this with a base like sodium hydroxide to take care of the HCl, and you can free back up the amine and get it back. This property of amines being reactive with strong bases to form water-soluble salts is a very common way to purify and separate amine compounds from other components. Well, how do we make amines? We know that we can make nitro compounds on aromatic rings by doing nitration reactions on benzene. Um, one of the things we can do is use catalytic hydrogenation, such as hydrogen and nickel, to reduce the NO compound to the amine compound. In this way, we can make amino benzene compounds from those nitro compounds. So that's one way in which we can get amine compounds is by reduction of nitro compounds. There is no good way to put on the nitrogen directly onto a benzene ring. The other aspect of nitrogen compounds is that not only does it react with protic acids, but it also reacts with electrophilic carbon species such as alkyl halides. It does nucleophilic substitution with the lone pair of the nitrogen to displace the chlorine or break the carbon-halogen bond. If you use a nitrogen compound as a nucleophile which is neutral, then it forms a quaternary ammonium salt again because we've formed a fourth bond to the nitrogen. And this salt uh, then would could be freed up if you react this with a base to take off one of those protons. As a matter of fact, when we carry out this reaction, an extra equivalent of the amine is sometimes utilized as that base to take the proton off. So what we end up with is the compound where we have the alkyl group and then a different ammonium salt. So at best, the reaction only goes to about 50% completion relative to the amount of amine we add because we need two equivalents of amine. One is used as a sacrificial base. The other equivalent is used to make the alkylated compound. Now this reaction works very well with a lot of different alkyl halides to do SN2 substitution. However, it's not the most practical reaction. Be Let's say you want to make the compound of methylpropanamine by this reaction. You can use this compound to do the nucleophilic substitution and, and then you can have an extra equivalent of the amine base to take care of the HBr that's generated in the reaction and get this compound. However, the problem is once you've done that, you still have an amine compound which is reactive. This can react again with your bromomethane to do another substitution so you end up with the dialkylated compound and even the third one can react again to form the quaternary ammonium salt, which looks like this, which has three methyl groups attached. So in this reaction, we actually generate a mixture of the molecule which has one methyl group added, 
the molecule which has two methyl groups added and the molecule which has three alkyl groups added. And there's not a lot of selectivity in this reaction because each product you form from this reaction is still reactive with your bromomethane electrophile.